Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla. So people keep talking about the competition and how they will come in and take Tesla sales, but they won't. So let me try to make this as clear as possible and show you why all these great plans from GM, Ford and Volkswagen and so on to go electric does not matter for Tesla, but really matters for the old guys. And they are not moving fast enough. Let me show you why and let's dive right in. So let's start by taking a look at the big boys and their production numbers of ICE cars versus EVs. Volkswagen has a plan for 1.5 million EVs in 2025, but is still making about 6.3 million cars annually. The Volkswagen brand, not the group. GM's plan is for 1 million EVs in 2025 and have a production of 7.7 .7 million cars annually. Ford I don't believe they will be at 1 million at 2025. They have their Mark E coming out soon, but the Ford F-150 electric pickup truck is not coming out before 2022. So it looks like they are moving kind of slow. So for them to be over 1 million EVs at 2025 seems highly unlikely. And I really don't see any other OEMs to make more than 1 million EVs in 2025. I think Volkswagen is the most aggressive and they plan for only 1.5 million. So, and Toyota don't really believe in electric cars. They are still betting hard on hydrogen, so they will not make a lot of EVs in 2025. They had previously stated that they will come out with 9 electric cars in 2025 but have now rushed that deadline to start bringing them to life next year. So it seems that everybody is kind of waking up slowly and rushing electric cars to the market to show they're in the game and everyone is putting even more money into EVs than were first planned. But it is not easy making a good EV, as we have seen. Volvo and the Polestar 2 has been recalled two times now, and the ID3 and all the software problem they had and are still having, uh, they still have a lot of bugs in their system. And the Chevy Bolt from 2017 to 19 has been recalled because of fire issues. So even though they have been making cars for decades and some of them for a century, making EVs are very different. They are experts in combustion engines, the only thing an EV doesn't have. But they are talking about all these different EV models they are coming out with, some with 9, 20, 30 or 40 different models. So is this not going to hurt Tesla? I really don't think so. Because even though it sounds great that GM wants to make 30 different models, they only plan to produce about 1 million EVs in 2025. So that is only about 13% of their annual production numbers. So they will still heavily depend on the ICE cars in 2025. In fact, their production will be 87% ICE cars in five years. So why is this? Why are they not moving faster? As I have talked about before, they don't have the batteries. GM is building one factory right now with LG Kim that will produce about 30 gigawatt hours per year. That is only enough for about 400 to 500,000 EVs. And that plant won't be ready until 2023. And they don't have a plan right now for any other battery factories. And this one is taking more than three years to build. So they are still going to be heavily dependent on other battery manufacturer in 2025 just to get to the 1 million target. So even though they have great experience in manufacturing and making cars and producing in high volume, it does not matter when it comes to EVs because they don't have the batteries to be any kind of threat to Tesla because what they have planned right now is simply not fast enough. 
I know people don't like it when we talk about the auto market and the EV market as two separate markets. And it's true, it's one and the same, but we do need to get every single car that is produced to become an EV at some point. So if no one else is filling up that demand for EVs that are right now and is only going to get bigger, Tesla will fill this gap. But they don't have a cheap EV. Nope, but at the speed of the other OEM switching to EVs, Tesla will have a real affordable EV for the mass market to all over the world. They will be producing one in Europe for the European market, then one in China for the Asian market, and maybe more. And they will start coming out with these cheap cars, as Elon said, within the next three years, two years before 2025. And that is before Ford, GM and even Volkswagen is really ramping up. Because for them to come out with only about three to four million EVs combined in 2025, Tesla will produce more electric cars than these three giant combined. And Tesla can actually do this because they will have the batteries to do so. And they will have the factory to produce this many cars. So absolutely no problem for Tesla to produce over 5 million cars in 2025. They have everything in place to do so. And the others can't. They don't have the batteries and the demand for EVs is there and it's only going to skyrocket when Tesla suddenly is also producing cars cheaper than the others can make a similar ICE car. Remember the expert has been saying for years that the EV will hit parity with the ICE car when the price of batteries will hit a hundred dollars per kilowatt hour and Tesla will cut that price target in half with their new battery. Because according to Sandy Monroe, the car expert, Tesla's battery are already at $108 per kilowatt hour and Tesla will save 56% with the new battery. That will bring it down to $47.5 per kilowatt hour. That is more than half the price of where we should have reached parity with the ICE car and it will increase 55% in range as well. Just to add on top of that. And Tesla is also making the manufacturing itself cheaper with their giga casting machines, making building the factories cheaper as well. So in just a couple of years, Tesla will be able to produce EVs just as cheap or cheaper than Volkswagen can produce an ICE car. And that is really going to change the game. Now most people will be able to afford an EV and Tesla will be there ready to meet the demand. The others won't. Because GM, Ford, the Volkswagen Group, Toyota, Mercedes, BMW, Hyundai, Kia and every other OEM will probably not have more than, mm, let's say, 10 million EVs combined between them in 2025. The whole car market is about 90 million cars, so 10 million is nothing. And even if we double that and say 20 million combined, it is still nothing, or at least not more than 22% of the auto market. But here is Tesla in 2025 with a cheap electric car that is going to be cheaper than most other ICE cars, especially when we take the true cost of ownership into account, and that are better than the ICE car easier to drive, much less maintenance and safer. So in my opinion, the majority is going to want this cheap and better product. Why would you buy something that is more expensive and worse? Most people are going to want to. It just doesn't make sense to buy an ICE car anymore at that point. But GM still has 87% of their fleet being ICE the product people no longer want to have. So the demand for EVs, in my opinion, in 2025 is pretty much going to be 90 million cars. I think most people are going to want one. Maybe there are some edge cases and some don't want one. So let's just say 80 million. Oh, oh what the hell? Let's just cut it in half and say half the people want an EV. That is 45 million cars. Even though you won't be able to sell a nice car in a country like Norway at that point. 
But let's just say at this point the real demand for EVs are going to be half the market share, 45 million cars. Because I think most people would like to get an EV even today, but most people still think they are too expensive because they want what Tesla offers. The Tesla range, the Tesla performance, and you only get that with the Tesla, but they are still very expensive cars. So anyway, I know most people I know want to go electric, but the cars are not there yet. So a demand for EVs in 2025 that is half the market share, in my opinion, is very conservative. I think most people would go electric if they have the choice of an EV that didn't cost more than the same ICE car. As we see right now, you can get the Chevy Bolt, but that is more expensive than a compatible ICE car. The same thing goes for Volkswagen or everyone else, pretty much. So we are still missing this cheap electric car. That is still a real car, not like a Volkswagen E-Op electric version that is pretty much just a little scooter with a lid, a little death trap. No, a real electric car with good specs. But Tesla will bring this to market and will be ready in 2025 with cheap cars. But the demand for EVs is much, much higher than the industry can produce in 2025. If we are the most generous Santa Claus of all time, and let's just say all the other OEMs can combined produce about 20 million EVs in 2025, and Tesla will also be producing 7 million cars. That is still only 27 million EVs. But if half really want an electric car, the demand is 45 million. So everyone that is going to make EVs can sell everything they produce. And it is also what we're seeing right now. Volkswagen's first ID3s are sold out. Force Mark E is sold out. GM's CGI Hummer <laughs> is sold out. Everyone sells every EV they make. The problem is not demand, not for Tesla, not for everyone else. The problem is that they can only produce very small amount of EVs. And when Tesla comes out with their cheap electric car for the true mass market, it is not going to be a question of demand. It is going to be a question of how fast is Tesla able to scale up? Because they will, in my opinion, still be able to sell every car they make. So if they are able to produce 7 million cars in 2025, they will sell 7 million cars in 2025. Because the demand is going to be there. It is already here for electric cars. We just don't have all the right cars yet. So if you were given the choice to get the car you want, but you could also get an electric version for the exact same price, or maybe a bit cheaper, but the electric version of your car of choice would be safer, better performance, cheaper maintenance, you can charge overnight, don't have to go to the gas station all the time, it's better for the air pollution in your cities and for your children. Wouldn't you buy this car? I think most people would. Of course, there's going to be some grumpy old men that will never buy anything but a gas car. I don't care about the environment and the safety of my children. I just want to drive my polluting diesel truck. Sure, but just like the ice car, they are a dying breed. So that is why I don't see any of all these big boys coming out with all their different EV models being any kind of threat to Tesla because they can't produce them in mass scale. So it does not matter. The demand for EV the next 10 years will be more than the industry will be able to produce. And even Volkswagen have said they will only produce about 40% EVs in 2030. Simply not fast enough. So for Tesla to be able to make and sell 20 million cars in the year 2030 is only a question of production, not demand. And with the growth rate we see Tesla has right now, so they should actually be able to make 20 million cars by 2030. The big boys don't even think they will be at 50% EVs at that point. So the demand is going to be there. The only way for the other automakers to put a stop to Tesla's growth is by making the switch to EVs faster than they even have a plan for right now. To close the gap 
of the EVs from where we are today and all the way up to the 90 million cars. So I do hope they will look at Tesla and what they're doing with the battery production and start copying Tesla's method. So they don't have only like 30 or 50 gigawatt hours of battery production in five years time, but have hundreds of gigawatt hours of batteries. So we will still have some healthy competition in the EV market and not just being dominated by Tesla or maybe other startups or China. So I do hope that Ford and all the other legendary automakers will start waking up and betting more on EV and run faster and not run these legendary companies in the grave. Like we have seen with many companies through the years that didn't wake up in time, like Blockbuster, Nokia or Kodak. Kodak is actually a really great example of how a disruptive technology can kill even the most experienced company in the field. And why the big OEMs like Volkswagen, Toyota, Ford, GM, can't just expect to survive because they have been doing this for a hundred years. Yes, so did Kodak. They have been around since 1889, but in 2012 they filed for bankruptcy. They even tried to get into the digital market as early as 1991, but they didn't move fast enough and didn't move fast enough away from analog film to a 100% digital product. Sounds familiar? Being around a hundred years, one of the biggest cats in the game, tried to make the switch but half-hearted and failed. Yes, there's no guarantee these big boys will survive even with all their money and expertise. And even with them trying to make the switch, it is still a very difficult thing to do. And especially when you don't have all the time in the world to do so because someone is coming and coming fast with a very disruptive technology that you are not an expert in. So I'm no longer worried about Tesla. I haven't really been since late 2018 when they did survive the production hell. But now they're doing very well and there's just an ocean of demand for EVs. So they can just scale up as fast as possible because the old guys are not closing the gap in the EV market. No, I'm not worried about Tesla. I'm worried about the old guys. That they think that all these hundred years of experience is just magically going to save them from this disruptive force called Tesla. Because it is not. It is going to be hard and very expensive. And they have to go all in now or they will not make it. Hope this gave you an idea of why I don't see the so-called competition as any threat to Tesla. Because there is going to be an endless demand for the next 10 years and Tesla will come with a cheap car. And the other OEMs are just moving too slow. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice.